Hi everyone, thank you for patiently waiting. <clears throat> My name is Ed Davis. I'm the Technical Support Specialist for Raystar Incorporated in Rockville, Maryland. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. We really appreciate it. The title of today's talk is Brain Function and Pathology, the Role of Long Non-Coding RNAs in Neurobiology. As you will learn shortly, LNCRNAs were once dismissed as so-called transcriptional noise or pseudogenes essentially transcripts without any useful function. Now, however, LNCRNAs are known to perform very important roles in biology, and their misexpression has been associated with several devastating diseases. The emphasis on today's talk will be on the prevalence and roles of LNCRNAs in the nervous system, the function of some neural LNCRNAs, and how aberrant LNCRNA expression can be associated with some diseases of the nervous system. <clears throat> Before I get started, I just want to take care of a few practical matters. First, you may ask questions at any time. However, you will not be able to speak vocally to me. Instead, you will need to type your questions in the questions field in your control panel. Also, in the interest of keeping the flow of the talk going smoothly, I will wait until the end of the talk to answer your questions, at which time I will answer each question in the order in which it was received. I will read each question out loud before answering. If you cannot see your control panel, it might be hidden. In that case, look for a small strip of buttons on the right-hand side of your screen. The top button will be orange with a white arrow. Clicking on that arrow will reveal the control panel, and then you will be able to type your questions. Okay, so now let's get started. Again, the focus of this webinar is on the significance of LNCRNAs in the central nervous system. So why should this matter? Why study LNCRNAs in the brain? Well, recently, in a paper describing the latest version, version 7, of the GenCode database of LNCRNAs, the authors manually curated a set of nearly 10,000 stringently de defined LNCRNAs in humans onto a custom-designed microarray. They used this microarray to analyze the expression of LNCRNAs in 26 human tissues, including nine regions of the brain. The data, as analyzed in a review by Nose and Son, indicate that 5,458 out of the 9,747, or 56%, of the LNCRNAs in gen code are expressed in the central nervous system. So, it is likely that LNCRNAs play a central and important role in the development and or function of mammalian central nervous systems. With that in mind, <clears throat> excuse me, here's an outline of today's seminar. In part one, I'll give you an introduction to what LNCRNAs are and how they're expressed. The biological significance of LNCRNAs and how they function in some normal cellular processes. From there, I'll tell you how LNCRNA misexpression can contribute to disease in humans and how LNCRNA profiles can be used as biomarkers for disease. Next, I'll demonstrate the prevalence of LNCRNAs in the brain. And in part four, I'll discuss how LNCRNA misexpression can be associated with several devastating diseases of the central nervous system. Finally, I'll introduce ArrayStar's innovative microarray solutions um, to the study of LNCRNAs, the ArrayStar LNCRNA microarrays for humans, mice, and rats. These arrays offer p powerful tools that can be used for LNCRNA and mRNA profiling in studies of the brain and central nervous system. Okay, so now I'll start with part one, introduction to long non-coding RNAs, also known as LNCRNAs. Despite the importance of protein coding genes in our lives, <clears throat> only about one to two percent of the human genome encodes proteins. However, about 75% of the genome can tr be transcribed among different cell types. The body of non-coding transcripts is comprised mainly of ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA, microRNAs, we associated or pi RNAs, and the subject of today's talk, LNCRNAs. 
So the take home message of this slide is that most of the human genome is transcribed, but very little of it encodes proteins. Right, now biologists are familiar with the classic central dogma term, term coined about 50 years ago by Francis Crick in which DNA makes RNA makes protein. However, we now know that non-coding RNAs can activate or repress transcription and activate or repress translation, and so have major, play major roles in the processes of transcription, post-transcriptional modification, and translation. Long non-coding RNAs, dismissed for decades as either pseudogenes or transcriptional noise, are the latest members of this mysterious group of regulatory RNAs to be spotlighted for a role in genetic function. Okay, so what are LNCRNAs? LNCRNAs are defined as eukaryotic RNA molecules greater than 200 nucleotides in length. In addition, they appear to have no protein coding capacity or no significant open reading frames. Further, LNCRNAs are involved in normal development, they function strictly as autonomous RNA molecules, and their inappropriate expression can be associated one way or another with disease. The expression and structure of LNCRNAs is very similar to that of protein coding messenger RNAs. As seen in this table, both are transcribed by RNA polymerase II, both can be spliced from intron-containing precursors, both are often, though not always, polyadenylated, and both contain seven methylguanosine caps. The biggest difference between LNCRNAs and messenger RNAs, however, is that LNCRNAs do not appear to be encoded for pro do not appear to encode for proteins. Another fundamental difference between LNCRNAs and messenger RNAs is that while mRNAs represented in green in this figure are nearly always exported to the cytoplasm for translation into proteins, LNCRNAs represented in black often though not always, usually though not always remain in the nucleus. This phenomenon is consistent with the observed role that some LNCRNAs play in the transcriptional and post-transcriptional regulation of gene expression. LNCRNAs tend to be expressed with tissue and or developmental stage specificity telling us that the expression of the genes encoding LNCRNAs must be tightly regulated. As I mentioned earlier, LNCRNAs share many of the same characteristics as their protein coding messenger RNA counterparts. Since LNCRNAs are also transcribed by RNA polymerase II, their promoters are regulated by the same mechanisms as well. For example, LNCRNAs are regulated by well-known transcription factors. In one study, John Rin's group at MIT showed that the well-known tumor suppressor protein 50, P53 binds to the promoter of an LNCRNA, link RNA P21, link RNA P21, and induces its expression in response to DNA damage. Link RNA P21 is required to activate the DNA-dependent apoptotic function of P53. In another example, Leonard Lipovich's lab at Wayne State University demonstrated that two LNCRNAs are regulated by the transcription factors OX4 and NANOG in the differentiation of mouse embryonic stem cells. In addition, LNCRNAs are subject to control by epigenetic chromatin modifications. In a collaboration between John Rins and Eric Lander's labs, it was shown that many LNCRNA genes carry a so-called chromatin signature. Histone H3 lysine 4 trimethylation in promoter regions and histone H3 lysine 36 trimethylation in the body of a gene. These so-called K4, K36 domains are found in protein coding genes too and so are excellent predictors of the occurrence of transcribed units. Trimethylation of histone H3, lysine 4, and lysine 36 tends to be a mark for activating gene expression, so-called open chromatin. By contrast, LNCRNA genes, like protein coding units, become methylated at cytosine residues, most notably at CPG dinucleotides. 
CPG methylation, primarily in promoter regions, is a well-known epigenetic DNA modification that tends to repress gene expression in so-called closed chromatin or heterochromatin. Further, lnCRNA genes tend to occur in several interesting genomic arrangements in relation to protein coding genes. So they are transcribed in many different ways. We know of five distinct subgroups of lnCRNAs based on their physical proximity to protein coding genes. In this figure, protein coding genes are shown in blue and their non-coding lnCRNA counterparts are shown in red. So the different classes that we know of are known as intronic, sense overlapping, antisense overlapping, bidirectional, and intergenic. Sense overlapping lnCRNAs are transcribed in the same strand and overlap with protein coding messenger RNAs. Intronic lnCRNAs are initiated from within an intron and can overlap and messenger RNAs on either the sense or antisense orientation. Antisense overlapping lnCRNAs are transcribed to overlap with mRNAs in the antisense orientation. Bidirectional lnCRNAs are transcribed in divergent ori orientation with an mRNA that is less than 1,000 kb away and may in fact share a promoter or bidirectional promoter with that M mRNA. And finally, Intergenic lnCRNAs, shown at the bottom, are transcribed without any overlapping protein coding genes at all and are located more than 1,000 base pairs away from a protein coding gene. These intergenic lnCRNAs are also known as large intergenic non-coding RNAs or link RNAs. Thanks to intense research over the past six years or so, LNCRNAs are now known to play critical roles in diverse biological processes. This slide shows a, a small sample of such processes, such as control of muscle differentiation, modulation of apoptosis, regulation of cell growth, reprogramming of induced proliferant stem cells, and development. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, LNCRNAs are known to be involved in many, if not all, of the steps in the expression of protein coding genes. Here are a few examples depicted in the figure. Um, one example, one well-known example is, exists, excuse me, I think I, yeah, one well-known example, probably the most famous example of, is exists, which is essential for X chromosome inactivation in female mammals. So what happens here is this lnCRNA, which is transcribed from the X inactivation center on the silent X chromosome in females causes chromatin remodel remodeling to spread outward from the X inactivation center, thereby silencing the X chromosome in cis. Another well-known function of lnCRNAs is to act as long-range enhancers of protein coding gene transcription, as originally described by Raman Shakater's lab at the Wistar Institute. In a recent paper, Fan Lei and colleagues determined that a class of enhancer-like lnCRNAs, known as ncRNA-A, executes its enhancer function by binding with mediator and causing DNA looping to the target gene and thereby influencing the target gene's expression. lnCRNAs are also known to affect genes post-transcriptionally. In one recent example, Shu Han Sun's lab demonstrated this for lnCRNA LET, an lnCRNA that inhibits hypoxia induced tumor metastasis. The protein N90, which physically interacts with lnCRNA LET, is stable in the presence of the proteasome inhibitor MG132, as shown in the top panel of this western blot. However, NF90 levels are decreased in the presence of the protein synthesis inhibitor cyclohexamid as shown in the bottom panel. These results indicate that the normal cellular function of lnCRNA LED is to reduce NF90 expression by promoting its ubiquitin mediated degradation, which so far is a novel mechanism of lnCRNA function. 
Okay, so far I've introduced you to long, what long-known encoding RNAs are, how they're and how they're structured and regulated. So now let's move on to part two, LNCRNAs and disease. As I've discussed, LNCRNAs play critical roles in the biology and development of mammals, so their inappropriate expression can be expected to be associated in one way or another with disease, such as cancers. This can be either by being expressed in a tissue in which it's normally turned off, or by a change in levels within a tissue, or various other mechanisms. So if a disease state is associated with or caused by the misexpression of an LNCRNA, that LNCRNA could potentially serve as either a biomarker or treatment target of that disease. One example of an LNCRNA being associated with disease comes from Howard Chang's lab at Stanford University. Chang's group overexpressed hot air, which modulates chromatin structure at the Hox, Hox D locus. They did this overexpression in four different cell lines, shown here at the bottom of this graph at the, on the left. In these cell lines, overexpression of hot air shown in the red bars, caused an increase in growth on soft agar, which is a classical assay for invasion and metastasis, compared with the mock transfected controls shown in blue. Conversely, in one of these cell lines, MCF7, siRNAs directed against hot air reduced growth on soft agar, as shown on the right. Taken together, these results suggest that abnormal expression of hot air can enhance the expression of breast cancer to a more invasive, malignant stage. It is conceivable that such LNCRNAs could be developed into treatment targets to reduce or eliminate the aggressiveness of particular cancers. Another example of a disease caused by aberrant expression of an LNCRNA is facioscapulohumeral muscular dystrophy or FSHD. This figure is from a paper out of David Gabellini's lab who used qPCR to analyze the expression of the LNCRNA DBET in both muscle biopsies as seen in the left and in primary muscle cells as seen on the right. In both cases we see that the level of DBET RNA is much higher in muscle tissues taken from FSHD patients denoted by the black bars in both cases than it is from healthy individuals, denoted by the white bars. The authors went on further to show that the aberrant DBT expression causes FSHD by bringing the protein ASHL1 to a genomic locus containing repeat sequences, causing chromatin remodeling and FSHD-associated repeat instability. Okay. So, now that I've gone over the, associative, so the association of some LNCRNAs with disease, I'll proceed to part three, the prevalence of LNCRNAs in mammalian nervous systems. LNCRNAs are widely expressed in mammalian central nervous systems. Indeed, as I mentioned earlier, more than half of all known LNCRNAs were found to be expressed in human brains. This slide shows a partial list of LNCRNAs are known to be expressed in neurons. Some of the better characterized examples shown here include MEG3, MALAT1, and TUG1, which are expressed in the brains of both mice and humans. In the following slides, I'll describe the distribution of some brain-specific LNCRNAs in detail. Using the Allen Brain Atlas, or ABA, of expressed transcripts, John Maddox's group found hundreds of LNCRNAs that are expressed in the mouse brain. Shown here are six such examples of results of in situ hybridization taken from the ABA compared with no gene controls. The top panel shows three LNCRNAs that are expressed in different patterns in the murine hippocampus, while the bottom panel displays the expression patterns of three additional LNCRNAs in the cerebellum. In a later paper, the Matic group went further to show additional LNCRNAs that are expressed in the mouse brain and their distribution in different neuron types. 
One such example, RNA AK044422, is expressed in several regions of the mouse brain as shown by NC2 hybridization from the APA. In addition, um, the expression levels of AK044422 were found in several neuron types by microarray profiling. As shown on the right, where expression levels are normalized to those found in neural stem cells, or NSCs, shown here. <clears throat> the LCRNAs are represented by the red bars, while an mRNA neural marker is denoted by the blue bars. So in this case, it's shown that um, this is shown in the neural types of um, NOP, which is neural OL progenitors, GABA-N, which is GABAergic GABA neurons, OLP, oligodendrocytes, Paul, and myelinating oligodendrocytes. Excuse me, myelinating oligodendrocytes. <clears throat> in addition, Carrieri and Samadhi and colleagues demonstrated that an LNCRNA transcribed antisense 2 and partially overlapping with the protein coding mRNA to regulate its expression. This LNCRNA, named ASUCHL1, promotes translation of UCHL1, which is a protein whose loss causes ataxia and, and axonal degradation in mice, and so is required for normal neuronal development. ASUCHL1, which is expressed in dopaminergic neurons, contains within it repeats for the repetitive elements sine, uh, ALU and sine B2, which are prominent mobile elements in mice, and that the presence of the sine B2 element is required for ASUCHL1 activity. Another example of an LNCRNA that functions in the nervous system as an antisense transcript of protein coding messenger RNA comes from a recent paper by Lipovich and colleagues at Wayne State University. BDNF-OS is an LNCRNA antisense to the brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, which plays a major role in neural function. In neocortex tissue removed from seizure patients, BDNF-OS RNA is down-regulated in more electrically active regions of the neocortex relative to others, while the levels of BDNF mRNA are concomitantly increased. As further support for these results, the authors knocked down BDNF-OS in the SHSY5Y cell line, indicated by the black bars, and in three independent replicates, they observed a corresponding increase in BDNF mRNA levels, indicating that BDNF-OS is a negative regulator of BDNF mRNA expression. So now, in part four, after I hope I've convinced you that LNCRNAs play a major role in the central nervous system of mammals, I'll discuss the roles of LNCRNAs in neuropathology. Huntington's disease, also known as HD, is a devastating fatal neurodegeneration, neurodegenerative disease caused by triplet repeat expansion in a gene encoding the Huntington protein. Shown here is a list of LNCRNAs whose expression is altered in HD patients. Rory Johnson found that some of these LNCRNAs are target, targets for REST, a transcriptional regulator known for its involvement in HD-mediated neurodegeneration. Another notable neurological disease that's been linked to the misexpression of an LNCRNA is Alzheimer's. The Volstead lab at Scripps found that a 2KB LNCRNA antisense to the beta secretase or base 1 gene, shown here in green, is induced in response to numerous cell stressors, including serum starvation and the agent mediating neurodegeneration in Alzheimer's A beta peptides. The Gihi et al., based on RNA's protection studies, which showed that Base, uh, the antisense LNCRNA protects base 1 mRNA from degradation by RNA, RNAs A in vitro, proposed that base 1 AS stabilizes the base 1 mRNA in, in vivo, leading to the production of even more A beta peptides and contributing to the worsening pathology of Alzheimer's patients 
in a positive feedback regulatory loop. Again, these results offer promise for using BASE-1 AS as a treatment target for this devastating, currently incurable disease. Further, in a very recent publication, NIH investigators Mark Zayatz and Owen Renner profiled LNCRNA and mRNA expression in autism. The results indicate that 82 LNCRNAs are differentially regulated in the prefrontal cortex of autism patients versus controls, while 143 LNCRNAs are differentially regulated in the cerebellum. Okay, by now, I hope I've convinced you that LNCRNAs play critical roles in the biology and development of mammals, that their aberrant expression can be associated with disease, and that they play major roles in the development and function of mammalian central nervous systems. So, last but far from least, I'll now tell you about the innovative solutions that we are at ArrayStar have come up with for studying long non-coding RNAs and how LNCRNA profiling can offer you tremendous benefit to your neurological research, neurobiological research. Um, ArrayStar has designed three microarray platform solutions for LNCRNA analysis. The first two microarrays shown on this slide are intended for expression profiling of LNCRNAs at the mRNA level. These are the LNCRNA expression microarrays and the ArrayStar TUCR expression microarrays. The ArrayStar LNCRNA expression microarrays, which profile the expression levels of all the currently known LNCRNA transcripts in humans, mice, and rats, are our best selling service. While the TUCR expression microarray, which is a new service, profiles the expression of a special subclass of LNCRNAs known as transcribed ultraconserved regions, or TUCRs. However, um, the TUCR expression microarray, which is a very specialized microarray, will be the subject of a future webinar. And for the purpose of today's webinar, I will only be discussing the LNCRNA expression microarray. In addition to the TUCR expression microarray, our microarrays for investigating the regulation of LNCRNA genes, the LNCRNA promoter microarrays, will also be a subject of a future webinar. Okay, so now you're all excited to profile the expression of LNCRNAs in neurological development or disease. How do you go about doing this? The availability of complete genome sequencing has led to an explosion in the, in the analysis and annotation of transcribed regions of the genome, including the identification of LNCRNAs. Currently, though, there are a number of challenges to overcome. Mainly, there is no single, comprehensive, or reliable LNCRNA data, public database in humans, mice, rats, or other organisms. Further, it has proven extremely difficult to design transcript-specific LNCRNA probes due to the overlap of many LNCRNAs with protein coding genes. So, Raystar has developed innovative microarray solutions to overcome these challenges, as you'll see on the next several slides. So, why choose Raystar for your LNCRNA profiling experiments? Well, Raystar has met and overcome the challenges to the study of LNCRNAs that I described earlier. For one thing, we've designed our arrays using data from the most established genomic databases available, including RefSeq, UCSC Genome Browser, ENCODE, and others. Also, our microarrays are designed in reference to groundbreaking landmark research papers. Second, Raystar uses stringent criteria for the construction of our proprietary LNCRNA databases. This slide shows an example using the LNCRNA class of transcripts known as link RNAs. In this example, we begin with the database mentioned the databases mentioned in the previous slide to identify expressed transcripts. Next, we filter out any non-link RNA transcripts um, and remove transcripts with protein coding potential so that we end up with express non-coding transcripts. And finally, we exclude LNCRNAs that are 
shorter than 200 nucleotides in length, so that we are left with um, simply this long intergenic non-coding RNA collection. And this also, so this excludes microRNAs, siRNAs, and other small non-coding RNAs. In addition to using the public databases, we also turn to the literature to aid in the construction of our LNC RNA databases. Again, using the, LNC, the link RNA collection as an example, we begin by identifying transcripts with the K4, K36 signature of expressed transcripts shown by John Rin's group in, in earlier publications. Next, we require that these transcripts have cDNA or EST records in GenBank so that they're expressed. Then after this, we go through the same steps for narrowing down the list of valence RNA genes described on the previous slide. So the take-home message from these slides is that we end up with a very comprehensive and reliable valence RNA database. So all these strict requirements ensure that we have a very high quality database for the design of our arrays. Another reason ArrayStar is the best choice for your LNC RNA profiling needs is our superior probe design. First, we use highly specific 60 base long oligonucleotide probes that detect only targeted transcripts. Further, these transcripts are these probes are synthesized in C2 for greater placement accuracy. Further, we design transcript-specific probes, which are designed to detect multiple RNA isoforms occurring from a single gene, as I'll discuss in the next slide. So what do I mean by transcript-specific probes? Well, other companies use gene-specific probes, shown here circled in blue, by placing them either singly or in clusters at the three prime end of the transcript. In contrast, Raystar's transcript-specific probes, circled in orange, are designed to hybridize with exons or exon-exon junctions, which allow you to distinguish between multiple transcript isoforms that the gene-specific probes cannot do. Further, Raystar's LNCRNAs give microarrays give you reliable, highly reproducible results. Figure 1, shown on the left, is a scatter plot between two technical replicates in a typical experiment. In this figure, the very tight scatter plot indicates that there is very little variation observed between the replicates. Figure 2 on the right shows comparisons between hits found on the Raystar LNC RNA microarray, shown in blue, with, with those validated and, and with, with experiments also performed for validation by qPCR, as shown by the red bar. As we typically see, both the direction and magnitude of the changes in expression in this set of genes are in excellent agreement between the array and the qPCR results. So the ArrayStar LNC RNA expression microarrays are our best-selling product line. This slide summarizes the important features of these arrays. The human ArrayStar LNC RNA microarray, version 3, comes in an 8x60K format and contains probes for more than 30,000 LNC RNAs and more than 26,000 protein coding genes. Similarly, the ArrayStar LNC RNA array for mouse, which also comes in an 8x60K format, contains more than 31,000 LNC RNA probes and more than 25,000 messenger RNA probes. And finally, ArrayStar has an LNC RNA rat microarray, which comes in a 4x44K format and contains probes for more than 9,300 LNC RNAs and for more than 15,000 messenger RNAs. So, with the ArrayStar LNC RNA expression microarrays, not only do you get to profile all of the known LNC RNAs in your project, but you get the added bonus of profiling all the known protein coding messenger RNAs as well, all in the same experiment. So Raystar has been in operation since April of 2009. In that brief period, we have successfully provided services for hundreds of esteemed universities, hospitals, and research centers around the world. In addition, the Raystar LNC RNA microarrays are the only commercial LNC RNAs arrays cited by publications. 
To date, there are at least 12 publications citing, citing the Erased RL and CRNA micro array service, and the list is growing rapidly. All of this in a mere four years. This list shows four such of examples of papers citing the Erased RL and CRNA microarray service, all, in, all occurring in high quality journals. So earlier in the talk, I showed slides with a partial listing of LNCRNAs that are known to be expressed in the central nervous system. The LNCRNAs shown here, all of which function in neurons, are present on either or both of the erased star LNCRNAs for humans and mouse. And remember, this is only a small sampling of the more than 30,000 LNCRNAs represented on each of these arrays. So on a final note, I want to I want to tell you that not only do LNCRNAs play a major role, play major roles in the nervous system biology, but that the array star LNCRNA microarrays offer you terrific industry-leading tools for LNCRNA expression profiling in neurobiological studies. Okay, so this brings me to the end of my talk, so I'd like to just briefly summarize. Today I told you that LNCRNAs have recently emerged as major players in the regulation of gene expression for normal mammalian development, that LNCRNAs are highly prevalent in mammalian central nervous systems, that aberrant expression of LNCRNAs in the CNS can be a major contributor to neurological disorders, and that ArrayStar has developed innovative microarray solutions, the ArrayStar LNCRNA microarrays for humans, mouse, and rats, which can be used to profile LNCRNAs in the central nervous system. Well, that's all I have to tell you about today. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to attend our presentation. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask me and to visit our website at www.arraystar.com or give us a call in the office at 188-416-6343. Okay, so at this point, I'll take any questions you may have. Okay, so the first question is, um, may I have the presentation slides? Yes, if anybody would like the presentation slides, um, feel free to send me an email. If you, the person who did ask this question, I, I will know your email address, so I will be happy to send it to you. Um, and that is not a problem at all. Okay, so the next question is, can we do a correlation of mRNA and LNCRNAs? And the answer is, yes, you can. Um, what we often do is if we will attempt to give, um, we will tend to, to um, show an analysis of LNCRNAs and mRNAs that are, that are differentially expressed at the same rates. This does not mean that they are coordinately expressed, but it is a starting point. And also, we give, um, we tell you the subgroup analysis of LNCRNAs. So, if you see an LNCRNA that's differentially expressed, we can tell you what the nearby protein coding re, uh, gene is and how the LNCRNA is arranged genomically in relation to that protein coding gene. Like if it's an antisense overlapping LNCRNA, for example, or if it's a bi directional one. So, that, that's another way of giving you clues to function. Okay, so let's see. Will we get the slides of today's presentation? Yes, you will. Um, a video will also be available on our, on our YouTube channel and our website, so everyone will get the link to that. Um, so anyone can see the presentation again, or if someone happened to miss it, that they can watch it down the road. Okay, next question. Is there any LNCRNA present in prokaryotes? Um, that's a very good question. There do seem to be some LNCRNAs expressed in E. coli, but um, only a very few. Very little is known about that. Almost all the research that's been done on LNCRNAs to date has been done in mammals or actually in eukaryotes. Some are known in, in yeast and zebrafish, but there's very little known about these in, in um, bacteria and other prokaryotes. Okay, next question. Do you have the do you have at the same array LNCRNA in the nearby coding genes or will it be two arrays? No, it's all in one array. 
Um, again, we, we have the subgroup analysis for LN CRNAs, which tells you the relationship of those LN, LN CRNAs with, pro, with nearby protein coding genes. And all of the tens of thousands of LN CRNAs are present on the same exact array as the protein coding genes. So you get, you get to, to answer two questions in one experiment. Okay, next question, how do we do the expression analysis? Can we do it on our own or can we outsource it to you? Well, actually, um, our LNCRNA microarray service is an all-in-one service. So what we do is we, we do the experiment from sample to data. So you send us your samples, which can be either um, total RNA or you can send us tissues and we extract the RNA further for you. And then we do the labeling, hybridization, and the data analysis. It's all one package. In addition to that, we also provide you with the raw data so that if you wanted to go on and do any of your own additional data mining using software such as Partech, you can do that. Um, and we have had customers who've done that. But in general, we don't usually separate the services. Like we won't, we won't just, we won't do a raw data only service we do the whole package with the analysis. And we can do additional um, types of analyses in addition to the standard analyses after the project is complete. Okay, so next question. Appreciate the email with slides of this presentation. Yes, anybody can get the slides if they want. Uh, next question. If we do blast of LNC RNA identified from a ray star microarray, will it bind to only one transcribed gene? Um, that's a, that's a good question. No, some of them, some of them do cross hybridize, um, with other, with other transcri transcribed elements and some, so it may, so, but we will tell you which ones are known to cross hybridize. Um, other than that though, most of the at least the overlapping antisense LNC RNAs will only have one, should only have one target gene. Um, now some LNC RNAs may have uh, multiple genetic targets because they might influence the expression of genes at the post-transcriptional level, but that doesn't answer the question of whether it will hybridize with another gene or not. So it really depends on, on what, you know, which LNC RNA you're, you're talking about. Okay, so next trend, next question is, please send me the slides. Yes, we will do that, and the video will be available as well, yes. Okay, next question, are Kaijin purification kits okay for the LNC RNA analysis from you? The answer is yes. So what we tell people is if they are preparing their, their own total RNA to send to us, then we, t if you, we tell them if you're comfortable preparing total RNA yourself and you have a preferred way of doing it, then by all means use that. A lot of customers will use the RNA Easy from uh, Kyogen. People will also use um, Trizol from Life Technologies, which is what we actually use as well here in the lab when we're doing extractions for people. So yes, Kyogen is fine and whatever you're comfortable with is fine as long as you get good high quality um, total RNA, that's that's the key. Um, and we also do quality control checks once we receive your RNA. So if the RNA doesn't pass our quality control test, then we will ask you for replacement samples. So Kaijin kits are very good. Next question, can you do RNAs in biofluids? Yes, we can. Um, as long as they are present, we should be able to do them. And as long as you can get enough RNA out of them, then yes, we can do it. Okay, next question. How much RNA total do you need per samples for one microarray? Uh, that's a very good question. So we typically ask for a few micrograms, usually 2 to 10 micro, micrograms of total RNA. Um, that's, to, that's in order to do the, ex, the experiment without any kind of amplification. Uh, we can usually go down to about 1 microgram of total RNA per sample um, to avoid amplification. However, we have actually done um, LNC RNA microarray experiments with as little as 50 nanograms of starting material. Um, however, in those cases, we have to do amplification, 
which we tend to discourage because you might get amplification artifacts. You, you know, you might not amplify everything equally. So basically, the more you can get, the better. Um, if you can get several micrograms, great. If not, then just send us what you can, and, and we'll do what we are most able to do with what we have. Okay, next question. Can we add the genomic coordinates or the chromosome locations of the non-coding and coding RNAs being profiled in the different array platforms? Well, um, if you're referring to, um, if you're asking whether we can provide the uh, coordinates of all the long non-coding uh, RNAs on our microarray, um, unfortunately, we do not provide the complete list of LNC RNAs on our microarray because it's a proprietary database that we've created. Um, however, what we do tell people, if it's before they start a project, we will say, well, if you would like to see if a particular set, like if you, like if you have, say, 10 long non-coding RNAs you're interested in, if you want to see if they're present on our LNC RNA microarrays, then go ahead and send us the list and we can tell you whether or not those LNC RNAs are present. Um, our human version 3 microarray just came out this year, so it is very likely that any, any LNC RNAs that people are interested in are going to be present on that array because we use the most updated database available. Um, but again, unfortunately, we can't release the complete list. Um, for customers who've already done a project and would like a list, um, we still don't provide the complete list, but we will give you the list and coordinates of LNC RNAs that are present in your project, um, that are that are different, that are actually expressed in your project. And um, the differentially expressed LNC RNAs and mRNAs that we give customers, we also give the coordinates so that they can easily track those down on at the chromosomal level. Okay, let's see. Um, the next question is, do we have to clean up total RNA using the Kaigen kit? Um, the answer is yes. You, you need to get the to the, your total RNA as clean as possible. Um, you know, we typically want a 260 to 280 ratio for total RNA of about, of, of about 1.8. And we'd like to see intact... Um, total RNA, so if you were running on a formaldehyde gel, you would want to see um, good tight 18S and 28S um, RNA bands, or you can also use the Agilent Bioanalyzer 2100, and if you use a bioanalyzer, we ask for a RIN number of 7 or better. So the better quality the RNA is, you know, the better your experiment will go. And again, we'll do, um, we will do quality control tests ourselves to see. Uh, okay, so let's see. Uh, next question. How many biological replicates that you need? Well, we treat, um, we treat LNC RNA, well, microarray profiling and sequencing profiling the same as any other genetic experiment. So we highly encourage people to um, use a minimum of three biological replicates per experimental group. And the reason for that is, is basic. For, you'll get, first of all, you'll get better statistical analysis, so better, you know, more reliable p-values, which we do provide. And secondly, you minimize um, artifactual results that, are, that come from known genetic variations between individuals, which even occur in inbred laboratory strains. Now we do have we do have customers who, you know, for various reasons can't provide biological triplicates, and so, you know, we might say, okay, well, if, if duplicates is all you can do, then fine, but, um, you know, we you know we really would like to see three. You know, duplicates is okay, but, you know, if you had an outlier, if one of them, if one of the two was an outlier, then, you know, you wouldn't be able to tell which one is an outlier, and. To send only one sample per group is highly discouraged. It's just not a good way to do an experiment. Okay, next question. Do you have any plan to make array for the recently discovered enhancer RNAs? Um, at, the, at the time being, we don't have a special array for that plan. Um, we do, of course, tell you 
Um, but that, uh, but we do of course tell you if if there's, you know, a, you know, an intergenic Allen CRNA, what that intergenic Allen CRNA might be, and so there's a possibility that that could be an enhancer Allen CRNA. We are working on plans to possibly make um, tissue specific or pathway Allen CRNA arrays, either by PCR arrays or hybridization microarrays, so it's possible that an enhancer RNA could be in the future, but again, at this time, we have, there are no plans in the works. It's a good question, though. And let's see, that appears to be the last question. Um, does anybody have any more? Um, you know, we, we can still take some more. Okay, well, if there are no more questions, then I'd like to say thanks again. And I really appreciate any, everybody's attention to the, to the webinar. And to have a great day.